Welcome to Paradise Valley United Methodist Church. Today we are beginning a four-week series called Loves and Loathes. We are talking about the scripture that we love and a scripture that we loathe. So both Pastor Lauren and I will be talking about one of those scriptures each time. And so today we are focusing on one of my favorite scriptures, one that I love, 1 Corinthians 13. I hope that the words that come your way through the scripture, through the preaching, and through the music will change your soul and make you ready for the, the world that you lead in this day. God be with you. Come join us and worship with us. Welcome in, everybody. We invite you to stand up and join us in our first song, Unstoppable God, this morning. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. We're so excited to have you here. Um, we're going to be singing Unstoppable God for our first song, so we invite you to join us today. Here we go. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on.
today's scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 13. So listen for the word of the Lord. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm a changing gong or a clashing symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give away everything, but I have and hand over my own body to feel good about it. What I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Love is patient, love is kind, it isn't jealous. It doesn't brag, it isn't arrogant, it isn't rude. It doesn't seek its own advantage, it isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints, it isn't happy with injustice, but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will be brought to an end. As for tongues, they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. We know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, reason like a child, think like a child. But now that I have become a man, I put an end to childish things. Now we see a reflection in a mirror. Then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been completely known. Now faith, hope, and love remain. These three things, and the greatest of these is love. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. So I was reading the scripture that Ryan read to us one time way back, and um, it was just in my devotions, I was reading it, and I was so moved by, by reading it that time that I decided I wanted 1 Corinthians 13 to be part of who I am. I wanted to make my character to be like this chapter. And so I, I, uh, I decided in the, just on the spur of the moment, I was going to read this one, once every day for 365 days, for a year. So I did that. It got kind of boring, and I was trying to memorize it, like, um, I mean, just to read. So I started writing it out so that I could memorize it. And sometimes I would say it out loud so that I could memorize it. So I thought, like, you know, after that much reading, I would be able to memorize this scripture, but I'm not good at memorization, no matter how much work I put into it. But I did notice that this started to become a little bit ingrained in me, the meaning of this chapter. In case you didn't know, um, we are in a new series. It's going to be a four-week series, and in this series, we're going to talk about scriptures that we love and scriptures that we loathe. So the, the series is called Loves and Loathes, and Pastor Lauren and I are going to each pick one scripture that we love and one scripture that we loathe, and we're going to preach on those scriptures. So today, I'm preaching on the one I love. I suppose if I had to pick one, this would be the one that I would pick. So as I began to read and read and read and say it out loud and write it, I saw that love wasn't something easy. I saw in the words of this scripture that, that, that love took determination and that love, even though it was the greatest thing out there, it's not something that you win rewards for. If you notice who gets accolades and notice and attention, it's going to be people who who do things that other people notice, they're successful, etc. But when you love well, it often goes unnoticed by humans. It seeks no glory for itself. And so I, I figured out, as I was reading this every day for a year and saying it out loud and writing it out loud, that love was hard. I figured out that the part of this scripture that really I need to to, to put inside of my life is that those words, but don't have love. So if I do this, but don't have love, then it, it doesn't matter. So I started to give myself that phrase, but don't have love. So am I doing this without love or am I doing this with love as part of who I am? 
So I was transformed after a year of reading 1 Corinthians 13. Much, much later, uh, like, I don't know, a couple decades later, I um, got a doctorate and I was with my friends who were in the doctorate program with me. And we had a wild hair moment where we decided to all go get tattoos because we just graduated and got our doctorate. I don't know what the connection is, doesn't make sense to me. But I had thought to myself, if I ever got a tattoo, it would be something to do with that chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, something about faith, hope, and love. So when the opportunity presented itself to me, I got a tattoo that, has, that is a symbol of faith, Faith is a cross and a symbol of hope, which is an anchor, and a symbol of love, which is a heart. It's on my ankle, in case you want to see it later on. (laughs) Um, I was kind of scared of the process, and there was a guy who was with us, who a student friend, who said, um, I asked, he'd already had tattoos, I said, does it hurt? And he said, well, it's kind of like labor pains. So while I was getting my tattoo and he was over there, I said, not even close. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) He just turned white. I was like, okay. Um, But I thought if there's ever anything permanent I wanted on my body, it would be uh, something that reminded me of 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and love. And so I, I have this... Thing that sometimes I love and sometimes I'm embarrassed about because I was not young when I got it. I was kind of way too old for that thing. <laughs> if you know the story behind the church in Corinthians, this chapter, this letter was written to the Corinthian church. Corinth was a vibrant community, a major city with a major trading port that connected the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea with Italy And Rome was the center of the world at that time, and so there was a lot of um, trading that was going on back and forth between Corinth and Rome. And so it was a vibrant, busy, business business kind of town. And into that place, Apostle Paul came and decided to start a church. And he spent 18 months with the people, bringing together a diverse group of people. He brought together people who were Jewish faith and taught them about... um, not only their continued Jewish faith, but also about Christ and uh, what Jesus had, the message Jesus had brought to the Jewish community and to the world. He also included non-Jews, which they called Gentiles at that time. And so there was this mix of Jews and non-Jews. There was also a mix of rich and poor, which was the hardest thing, groups of community to mix in Paul's day and probably still in ours today, bringing together rich and poor and everything in between. He also brought in this group slaves and freed slaves. Those who had been freed from slavery were also in this community. So you can imagine, I just named a whole lot of different kinds of people, and they were in church together. So then Paul left and um, went to start another church somewhere else after being with them for 18 months. And after he left, there was this clash inside the church. And the clash was mostly between the rich and the poor, There were problems, other problems that were going on as well. If you read the rest of of 1 Corinthians, you'll see some of the problems were that they were abusing their freedom. Somebody might in that church say, I'm a free person, so it doesn't matter if my freedom steps on your toes. They were refusing to share. I bought that communion cup, so you can't use it. They were scorning their neighbor's spiritual gifts. Your gift of healing won't mean much without my gift of generosity. They were boasting about their own spiritual gifts. I can prophesy better than you can. (laughs) They were seeking recognition for themselves. Did you know that I gave the initial amount of money to start this church? They were jockeying for positions of leadership in the church. I'd make a better church council chair, so why don't you go help feed the, home, the homeless over there and serve the food? You could say they weren't quite the grown-up church yet. <laughs> so Paul, after being gone, he heard about what was happening in the tr- first um, 
Christian church at Corinth, and he was mortified. And so he responds by writing this letter, 1 Corinthians, back to them. And in the 13th chapter, the one that, that was just read, it basically says this, church, practice love. That basically summarizes this book, this letter. And he's saying in the 13th chapter that it's important to know the primacy of love, the character of love, and the endurance of love. So this chapter 13 is broken into those three sections, the primacy of love. What that means is nothing else matters if you don't have love. That if we do great and great, great and good things but don't have love, it doesn't mean much. That if we speak in all the languages of the world and we can talk even with the angels but we don't have love, our words will sound like uh, fingernails on chalkboard. <laughs> That if we can prophesy and know all the mysteries of the universe, even if we have faith in enough to move the mountain from one location to another, but we don't have love, it means zero. And here's another one. If we give everything to the poor, um, if we give everything to those who are living on the streets, even if we give our body as martyr, but we don't have love, we might could feel somewhat good about ourselves, but it gets us nowhere. So there are so many things we can do in life, and if we do them without love, then the gift that we give is incomplete and empty. Love must be the primary thing. In the middle of the chapter, he talks about the character of love. Now, this is uh, the part that's really beautiful and poignant and and poetic, and we read it at weddings um, many times. Has anybody been in a wedding where you've had 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter read in your wedding? Yeah. So I'm going to read it to you again, but I'm going to read it to you in the message, which is a more contemporary version. It says, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. These words that we often use in wedding ceremonies, we can apply to ourselves in relationships like marriages, but also we could use these words to apply to our life in any relationship that we are in. These character words can be the mesh that we use to sift our words before we say them. They can be the testing ground in the ways that we care for each other in the church. These beautiful and timely words can be what we hold as sacred as we learn to love others better, as we learn to get better at loving. And then the last part of the chapter, he says, he talks about the endurance of love. And he starts out that section by saying, love never fails. This is prob probably the most challenging part of this chapter. Love never fails. Now, I know people who have divorced, and they've questioned me about this phrase, love never fails. They've said, Dottie, it seems like love failed me. My spouse deserted me. My spouse found another one to love, couldn't handle my sickness, etc." Or sometimes they say we grew up and we changed and we grew apart and we didn't love each other anymore. Love failed our growth spurts. I listen to their examples and I wonder what failed. Was it love? Or was it our ability to endure life while in love? Uh, Jim, Jim and I had a, an anniversary this um, last week. Actually, in July has been a significant moment for us. Um, one um, thing that happened is I became Medicare eligible. <laughs> 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 
how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> and the next thing that happened is we had our 43rd anniversary at the end of the month, just last week. And thank you. And um, we sat down at a restaurant that, that uh, we love, and uh, the, the server asked us if we were there for any special occasion. I said, yes, we're here for our 43rd anniversary. And right away she said, how did you do it? What's your secret? And we kind of paused like, dang, I don't know. <laughs> and then I said uh, something trying to be wise, you know, love is a decision. You, you, you don't always like or understand the other person, but sometimes you just have to stick with your commitment. And then Jim said something about forgiveness. And, you know, I, what we didn't say to her, because she didn't ask and she didn't have the time and it wasn't a counseling session, is that, um, <laughs> you know, that 43 years means um, we've been to counseling a few times, a few periods of times. And that love is something we've had to learn. And that Jim and I are not the persons we married. Um, after 43 years, you're different people. And you don't know who you're going to become when you become attached to somebody. There's challenges along the way. There's nights of crying. There's angry times. There's moments when it does not make a bit of sense. There's times when you just want to walk, at least for me. But somehow, we don't know how, we're celebrating our 43rd anniversary. And sometimes I know that in long-term relationships, there are many opportunities for love to fail or for us to fail love. And we just have to recognize that. But also, sometimes real love means letting go so the other person can grow. Now, Paul then talks about other things that do fail. He says, love doesn't fail, but these things do fail. He says, prophecies will end and languages and tongues will stop. And I thought to myself, when does language and tongue stop? And then I remembered my parents in their older age where they couldn't talk anymore after the strokes. Languages even end. And knowledge has its limits. I and mean, we thought we knew so much about the universe. And, and, and did you see in the last couple of weeks NASA's James Webb telescope that showed us how much knowledge we didn't have? That how there were millions of galaxies that we didn't know about before. It was just mind-blowing. The current state of knowledge that we have is limited. And Paul goes on to say, it's kind of like we sometimes are like children in our understanding of love. But now, he says, it's time to put away the childish things and start acting like grown-ups in love. To love like we are mature people. To love like Jesus loved us. To have this incomplete understanding that, uh, that, that, that helps us to see that we don't know it all about love. That we're still growing. But also to have this hope that someday perhaps we will completely know love. And then he says this beautiful thing at the end. Now faith, hope, and love, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Uh, my dad had a tattoo. It was right here, and it was, um, he was in the Navy, and it had a sailor hat on it, and it, um, I asked him many times as a child, Daddy, what's that tattoo about? And he always tried to cover it up and never wanted it to be show, seen, and, and he didn't want to talk about it, so I don't know, I don't know, he just he would say, it's just something about the Navy, and it's okay, so I, I never found out what it was really about, except that it has something to do with the Navy. And uh, after he passed, two of his granddaughters got that very same tattoo on different parts of their body. <laughs> Not because they were sailors or Navy people or knew what that tattoo was about, but because their grandfather had loved them well, and they wanted to remember forever his love. If you could tattoo something on your soul, tattoo this. There's three very important points in life to consider faith, hope, and love. But love, love is the best. We will always be learning how to love. We will always be growing in love. We will always be having to forgive so we can love again or better or differently. 
But remember love. I love you, Jim. Thank you, God, for sending us um, people who are willing to love us and for giving us the example of Jesus who taught us about love. Thank you for being with us when we're very unloving. And thank you for inviting us to mature in our ability to love. God, we pray that as a church and as a people and as a community and as families and as friends and workers together, that we would begin to live this chapter in our world who needs to know that they are loved too. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If I sing, I don't have love, I waste my breath with every song I bring, an empty voice, a hollow noise. If I speak with a silver tongue, convince a crowd, but don't have love, I leave a bitter taste with every word I say. So to just point a personal privilege say uh, welcome to baby Jameson first time in church so we're glad that he's here with us today and now um, receive this blessing from God as you leave you're going to go out of here as someone who has been well loved by God and loved pretty well by others as well and take the love that has been inside of your soul and take it out to the world that needs to know that love matters and that they are valued enough and loved too. And love them well and care for them. Be kind to them. Embrace them with God's mercy and forgiveness. And as you do so, you will be the body of Christ. Do so in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. 
Amen. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody.